Hey, this is Fred from the House of Fly, and we are now into February, and the last couple times I've been out swinging with my trout spay rod, one thing I've started to notice, especially uh, in the afternoons, kind of on those inside corners of soft water, is a few heads starting to poke up and some fish starting to, uh, to get more and more active feeding on midges. And as we get more later into winter and more toward the spring, um, where we're at here in Montana on the Missouri River, we often have really big midge emergences and they will get those fish up and get them moving. So I wanna talk a little bit about, you know, some techniques and some ways that you can target some of those uh, midge feeders. Um, they can be sometimes, you know, pods of small fish, but uh, also some of the really big fish, some of the 20 plus inch rainbows and browns will get up there and start uh, working on the emergers and the uh, adults and the uh, egg layers of those midges. So one thing about midges is they are really, really small. And the one of the most difficult things about fishing them is visually being able to see your fly and or being able to keep it floating. My very favorite midge pattern is essentially what we would consider to be a cluster midge, but the good old Griffiths gnat. There's a couple things about this fly um, that, that make it work really well or not. And the key is it needs to float and it needs to float high. That grizzly hackle, those little bits of uh, hackle need to be up on the water. If that thing is pushing down in the film or partially drowned, the fish generally are not gonna be too interested in it. It represents a group of midges that have glommed together um, and you want that thing to be sitting up on top so it just looks like the wings, um, the legs and the parts in motion. So a couple ways to make that happen is initially, I like to use a liquid floatant that really penetrates the body of the fly and gets in the hackle and really gets it ready to go. And then you wanna dust it. And you can literally dust this thing after every few casts because again, if that fly isn't high riding and floating well, they are not gonna, they're not gonna take it. You can put that same fly over fish after fish. If it's damp, they won't touch it. As soon as it's up on its tips, boom, they'll suck it down. So that is the Griffiths gnat. Um, it's, I would say size 16 is probably my most common uh, choice on this fly, so it's a little bit bigger. And oftentimes you can see it fairly well, but if you can't, you can certainly fish something a little more visible in front of it and that would be what we call the cluster midge. And this is essentially a Griffiths gnat with a big post so that you can see it and a bunch of little wing pieces. And this one doesn't have any hackle on the bottom. It, all the hackles are up on top. And this one can be fished right on the film. So I usually just will soak this one in liquid or you can use your favorite um, gel dressing and then you can tie off your Griffiths off the back of that. And this just gives you a, a better vision uh, up on the front side. And it also, uh, occasionally the fish will eat this, although I still seem to have most of my activity on that Griffiths. If you wanna get really technical on some, some feeding fish, you can fish little adult midges. These guys, again, are really small, especially since it's now you're talking in a single adult. So they run um, typically size 22 and I will often fish those in tandem with the, uh, the posted fly so I can actually uh, have better vision. And then of course this fly actually helps this one float by uh, you know, basically keeping the, uh, that tippet in between a little more um, up on the surface than if you're fishing it on a long leader. If you find yourself stuck with some really picky fish, um, on these little midges and you can tell that they're definitely feeding on adults and you're going to be fishing 5x tippet or possibly even 6x tippet one of the keys to keeping that little fly floating is to actually grease your leader and so if i start out with a nine foot leader maybe nine foot 4x leader and i run my 5x to my fly i'm going to grease that leader up so that leader stays high and dry and then I definitely won't grease the little, you know, tippet portion up to my, uh, my fly, but just 
Greasing that leader, keeping it floating is much less likely to drag and pull that fly underwater when you're casting. It'll keep it dry and it'll keep it floating uh, even on the drift. And then there's another pattern that we fish, and this one is super effective, and this is a little pulsating emerger. And a lot of times, as those midges get going, um, the fish will be taking the emergers, and this one is great to fish on a, uh, on a fluorocarbon tippet. And again, you can fish this behind a bigger dry version. Um, I like to run this one on, on fluorocarbon, either 5 or 6X, and you don't need to grease it. But occasionally, if the fish are really feeding on the film, you can put a little dust on it. And that just seems to really add to the uh, attractiveness. That little CDC with a little dust in there just sparkles. It, it just sticks right on the very edge of the film, kind of half wet, half dry, and really seems to, uh, to be the ticket to fooling those fish. So um, midges, a little bit challenging at times, but super fun to fish with. Uh, I like to go out and swing with my spay rod for a while in the morning until I see some rising fish and then uh, pick up my, uh, usually my four weight with the uh, lighter tippets and then uh, go chase some heads with the, uh, the little midge stuff. If you have any questions, please let us know. Let us know if, uh, if you've got some tricks that uh, we didn't talk about because we'd love to hear about them. And if you need any of the products here, um, we've got lots of midges, we've got lots of tippets, we've got lots of floating. It's all at the House of Fly. Tight lines. <laughs>